What's up everyone, Willie Apple here, and today, Apple has released macOS Sonoma to everyone, and in this video, I'll be showing you what is new inside of the software. Let's get the best feature out of the way first. If you were to right-click on the desktop and then click on Edit Widgets, you will see that you now have a widget editor in here, and it shows you right here that you could just edit your widgets in your notification center and on your desktop. So, it is exactly what it sounds like. If I were to add a widget right here, you could see it places itself. I don't know why the animation did not do itself before, but there it is. It has a pretty cool animation animation and it looks really nice I could just add as many widgets as I want and they do snap into place however if you move them away they don't but if you move them to the corner they will snap themselves in place but as long as they're not by a widget or not by the corner you can place them whatever you want probably the best feature of Mac OS Sonoma and will probably be the reason why most of you will be updating speaking of widgets you could actually place all of your iPhone widgets so if you saw up here you could see this from iPhone button you could actually load all your widgets on your phone so you don't need to download a dedicated Mac app but yeah you could put a Strava widget right here, which is from an iPhone. They don't have a Mac app as far as I know. And then we also have the brand new battery widgets here. So you can now track your magic mouse, your magic keyboard. And AirPods will also show up here. And right here is your Mac battery. They finally brought this to the Mac after it long being requested. But yeah, this is gonna be everyone's favorite feature. I could totally see it. I also made an app for the Mac that you could take advantage of desktop widgets right away. But if you don't really want to, you could download it on your phone. So take a look at Willy widgets down in the description down below. Let's move on to the next feature. Now you may notice my wallpaper is in Sonoma, California. This is the default wallpaper of Mac OS Sonoma, but look what happens when I do it as a screensaver. So you just saw that the wallpaper was moving for a little bit, and then when you log back into your Mac, it slows down and starts stopping. So it's a pretty cool feature, in fact, this isn't the only one that we have. So if I were to go into my settings and then go down to wallpaper, you're first of all gonna see some brand new stuff in here. So you can show it as a screensaver, obviously if you were to choose Ventura or something, it will not show up there, but the normal Sonoma one will show up, and in fact it does have a screen saver built in it does transition from a screensaver to a wallpaper and you just have a bunch of brand new options here if you're if you have an apple tv you'll see that a ton of your favorite screensavers are now inside of mac os sonoma however you do need to download them however there are a couple of very nice ones that i really like but yeah they're all really nice and then I'm not sure how many gigabytes it would take to do shuffle all but it probably would be a lot but I'm just going to download them since I have a storage widget right here so I can just keep track of how many wallpapers I downloaded and how much space. As far as I know, they are pretty hefty, so that's just something to keep in mind. Now the next thing is if you were to actually click on your desktop, you're going to see it actually goes back in and out. Do the thing on the trackpad anymore or press FN F11. You'll be able to just click it now. Now this may be a controversial change, but you could actually turn this off. To do that, you just go to desktop and dock and then click wallpaper to reveal desktop. You're gonna see you'll be able to change this to only in stage manager. So now if I were to click on the desktop, it doesn't do anything. However, if I were to go into stage manager, it would do it, but but after using Sonoma for a couple months, I say this change is an okay change. It's not the best, but I recommend trying to get used to it before changing it, since a lot of people will not be turning it off. All right, the next change has to do with your webcam. So there are a couple of brand new features in here. The first thing is if I were to do this, you get to see we have a brand new fireworks animation. It goes behind your chair and stuff like that. It goes behind you. And then you can even show some dissatisfaction, for example, like that. And if you really want to get into it, you can do this and it will start raining. And you can just hold one thumbs up, it will just do a thumbs up. There are a bunch of others, but you can control them manually if you were to go into here and then go into your camera and go to the app that's using your camera up here and then go to reactions. You can actually customize all the reactions. If you want the laser animation, you would do this one, I think. Yeah, there it is. And you have your laser animation. They basically just brought all the iMessage effects into here. 
but it is really nice that Apple has changed it. You're able to be triggered by a hand gesture. If you want to turn that off, all you gotta do is go into here and then click on this button and then if I were to do this, it will not do anything anymore, but if I were to turn it back on, you'll see the fireworks once again. But yeah, th this is a brand new feature inside of Sonoma. Now, how can I forget that we have some brand new lock screens? I'll need to take a screenshot real fast, one sec. All right, here's the brand new lock screen inside of macOS Sonoma. It still has all the Mac features you know and love, like everything's up here, except your password has been moved down here. Your profile picture is here too. I don't think it matters that much, but we also have an iOS style clock, however, at the moment you can't customize this. However, if I were to bet my money, you'll be able to customize this in macOS 15, who knows, but they did change this, and if you want to have the clock when in the screensavers, there's actually a setting for that. So if I were to open up settings in here, you will need to go down to lock screen and then where it says show large clock, by default, it will just say on the lock screen. You could change this to on screen saver and lock screen. Alternatively, you could just set this to never and it will just revert this back and it will look somewhat like Ventura's again. However, I think most people will like this new change. It gives the lock screen something new. And there's also a brand new animation when logging in. Instead of it just going straight to the desktop, it actually shows the dog fades in the windows it actually has a zoom in animation so instead of what I wanted was a sliding animation the Apple somehow made my suggestion even better now the next change is inside the music app so if you were to go into here and then go to a fairly new album for example red Taylor version you could actually see that there's actually some animations here now however if I were to play a Taylor Swift song and then go into here and then full screen it you're gonna see for some reason it does not animate it's just the picture there but this is still brand new and inside of Sonoma, and it's mostly an iOS 17 Apple Music thing, but it is pretty nice that Apple has added this inside of Sonoma. Right now, when you press and hold the F5 button, you're gonna hear that the Siri sound actually plays now. And something else with Siri that you might want to know is if you were to go into system settings, Siri and Spotlight, you can listen for that now. You don't need to just have a her name anymore. You can just say her name and then she'll know. Now, this will require an M1 Mac or newer, so just letting you know if you still use Intel. Now, the next thing is inside of Safari. So upon updating to Safari, you're going to see this brandy thing up here that says personal. If you click on it, you're going to see, you're going to see all your tab groups here. And you're gonna see your new empty tab group button, and that's basically it. How do you get this new switch to profile and new window button, and what exactly is this? So if you were to go up into Safari and then go to create profile, for me it says manage profile since I actually have profiles, you're actually gonna see this brand new thing inside of Safari settings. If you were to click on this plus button, you're gonna be able to make a new profile for whatever. For example, if I were to go to roblox.com here, you're gonna see I'm logged out, but if I were to move to my Roblox window and do the same thing, basically have multiple safaris and ones yeah you can have multiple roblox windows now it's just a nicer new way of having multiple instances in safari come in useful for mostly just school but it could be used for other cases like work if you want to separate your work and your personal stuff however it's not always required it's just a really nice feature for pro users who use safari this is my most requested feature of safari we have another brand new feature inside of safari if you were to go to a website and click on file you're going to see the brand new button that says add to dock after clicking on file basically what this does is it adds it to the dock now you don't need to have it in the dock you just move, remove it from the dock but you will eventually see it in your launch pad what this does is it actually turns any website into a quote-unquote app so this is Apple's website in an app however it is still basically just Safari just letting you know it's just an easier way to open up stuff you can use spotlight now for example if I wanted to go to Apple you're eventually gonna see in here your brand new thing that you added to your dock or just removed it and then just open it in Launchpad. If you just want to get rid of it, all you gotta do is go move it to the trash and then it will just delete itself, as you can see right there. But it's a nice brand new feature inside of Safari for those kinds of people that just want to have an app. So another thing is you're gonna see Spotlight has gotten even more rounded. It is a lot nicer, to be honest. Now, I like the roundness. It wasn't rounded enough, but it's just a lot nicer now. Another new feature, you might have seen it if you were noticing, 
And if we were to go into a new document right here, you're going to see we have a brand new typing indicator here. So basically, it's just the app's accent color. For example, the pages, it is orange. So it will show an orange typing indicator. The weather app has a couple of brand new things now. For example, you can now see the moon phase up here. For example, it is a... You can even scroll down and it gives you more information about the moon. I'm recording this at night, so it, you'll be able to see the moon up here. It's just really nice that Apple is constantly tweaking the weather app to stay consistent with the iPhone. The next thing is we have a brand new redesigned TV app. So if I were to open up the TV app, you might remember before that the things were on the top right here. But now they are on the side right here. If I were to go into the watch now section, you're going to see that we now have a brand new design that's more consistent with the iPad now. In fact, it's actually a Catalyst app, which means that it uses iOS code. So everything has been moved to the side. It's a lot more easier to use, to be honest. And it just looks a lot nicer now that everything's on the side. The next thing is if you were to move a file, or basically anything, if I were to want to move to the desktop, you'll be able to just do that, and it'll have a bouncing animation. In fact, a lot of the UI inside of Sonoma has a bouncing animation. I don't think that does, but if I were to go into settings, you'll be able to see that Apple has added bouncing animations across the entire OS. So inside of displays, if I were to do, go into here, you get to see that there's actually a browsing animation now. It's for both sides. It's the same. I'm going to move this down a little bit. It is the same with the sound. So if I were to move it all the way up, you're going to see it has a bouncing animation now. Same with going all the way down. It's just a nicer way of giving new feedback. And it's across the entire OS. The next thing we got is actually a redesigned screen sharing. So if I were to open up the screen sharing app, now have a UI here. Instead of it just having a menu, it would just show this before. We actually could sh see all the recents and all the connections that are coming into the Mac now. It's just a lot nicer that Apple has changed this. An Apple Silicon Mac is connecting to an Apple Silicon Mac. It should be a lot more reliable now as because doing it with arm to arm. There's actually a couple benefits to doing that and Apple has apparently been doing it with iPhone for years but now you're able to do this and in fact using SharePlay with FaceTime should be a lot better as well if you're FaceTiming an Apple Silicon user on an Apple Silicon Mac. Now the next thing we have is inside the messages app. So we have a couple of changes in here. The first thing is if we were to go into here, we actually have stickers. So you have all your emojis as usual. We could actually import stickers directly into here and they actually sync across your iPhone, iPad, and Mac as long as they are using iOS 17 and Mac OS Sonoma. And then you also have your recent stickers in here as well. Now the next thing has to do with emojis. So if I were to go into the text edit app and then type in um, so happy, for example, have a space and then press FN, you actually have emoji suggestions now. So if I wanted the smiley face, I could just click on it and then we'll put the smiley face right here. However, if I want to get to all my emojis, I could just press the FN key once again or just click on this button and I could just get any emoji that I want. So it's a pretty cool feature that Apple has added and in fact, it will probably make my workflow a lot better when texting friends. The next feature inside of Sonoma has to do with the Reminders app. So if I were to open up the Reminders app right here, you see this thing that says shopping list. Well, while this shopping list is not actually a shopping list, we actually have a brand new feature in here. So let me delete this real fast so I can show you the feature in action. So if I were to go to add list, I could actually change the list type to groceries. So I could just type in shopping list. And when you see a carrot, that is a good thing because if I were to type in carrots, for example, it will actually sort itself, so it should sort itself in a little bit. There it is. Now let me type in chicken, and then it'll put itself in meat, and then I can put ice cream, and yeah, it's just a built-in grocery list app, and it sorts itself by category. Now another cool new feature inside of Sonoma, let me show you my school planner real fast. You're actually able to see your homework, so this isn't a built-in feature, but if I were to click on this brand new button up here, you could have a brand new section and it doesn't replace what you were able to do. You could actually still do an indent just like that. So it's just an another way to categorize all your stuff. 
next brand new feature has to do with the notes app. Let's just say I had this essay I started typing out. I could actually share this note now and you're gonna see this brand new button here that says open in pages. So if I were to open it up in pages, it will load right here. It puts everything into pages and then I could just use more page, more advanced page features like headers up here and insert a page number. And it's just a nice new way of transferring your ideas to a pages app. And it's just really nice. I kind of like this feature. I'm not sure when I'll ever use it, but it's just a nice new way of doing all your stuff. Now those are all the features. Now those are all the best features inside of Sonoma. There are a couple of very minor, tiny ones, however, not many people will know or care about them. So thanks for watching, comment, like, subscribe, share it with your friends, and I'll see you in my next video. If you'd like to know the development cycles of future versions of macOS and even iOS and sometimes watchOS, you could just subscribe down below and I will be posting as many betas as I can so you can see what's new inside the betas so you can get excited. I'll see you in my next video. Bye!